welcome to 21 days of code first of all congratulations for completing your first week now we are going to raise the level a little bit so let's get started we are going to solve problem number 62 unique paths a robot is located at the top left corner of a n cross n grid and the robot can only move either down or right so at any point in time the robot is trying to reach the bottom right corner of the grid how many possible unique paths are there so this question if you see carefully this can be solved in two ways a direct approach and an indirect if you have studied permutations and combinations in your class 12 then you should know the direct approach actually uh, this is a normal grid problem so we will see the formula of the direct approach at last first we will use the indirect approach that is we will solve this question using dynamic program so first of all what we have to do here we have to find the unique paths that is one path can be from here to here one path can be from here to here so how many paths are there like for example here in this three cross two grid there are three ways there should be three ways so let's first draw the grid there are two rows and three columns right and we have here the starting and the ending point so let's draw the ways we can go right and right and down we can go right down right and we can go down right right so these are the three ways and uh, it was relatively easier to calculate but if we say the 7 cross 3 grid uh, that's a lot of trouble so how to solve it we will be using dynamic programming here so if you are not familiar make sure to check out the link in description also if you remember from our previous question minimum cost climbing stairs there in dynamic programming we saw that we use the previous states to get to our next state so we will see how that works here so first we have to make a dynamic programming that is a dp grid of same size as that of the rows and columns here that is we will make a matrix of m cross n size these are m rows here and these are n columns here then from this first square how many in how many ways can we get to this first square as we are only allowed to move right or down in this grid so we can only go from the starting point to this point and no other way we can get to this square so we'll write in one ways we can get to this square and how many ways can we get to this right square well also one way because we can only move from left to right to get to the square this square the same logic and every element of this row will be filled with the same logic that is we can only move from left to right to get to these squares so there will be only one way to reach this square from this now we will be seeing this column so in how many ways can we get to this square there is only one way because we can only move downwards so we will move from the starting point to the square down at from the starting point so here there is only one way to reach this square and to re reach this square there will all also be only one way that is from up to down so this much grid has been filled for us now in dp we use the previous states to get to a current state so this here is our current state now let's see how are we going to use the previous states here how in how many ways can we reach this square this white square so we can reach this white square in two ways either from top or either from left that is we can move from left to right or from from top to bottom so the answer will be this here num this number here and this number here that is one plus one that is two so we can reach this square in two ways and what will the answer here here we can reach from either top to down or from left to right now there is one point to note in the top square there are two ways to reach the this square so here we can reach from two ways above and one ways from left so the answer will be 1 plus 2 that is 3 
That is, we can reach the square in three ways. First, we can move here to here to here, then here to here to here, or this, this here. So there are three ways to reach this square. So we now know that how we will be using the previous states. So for filling this state, we will be using 2 plus 1, that is 3. That is, we can come here, 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 this is one way, here, 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 this is two. second way, and this, this, and this, this is the third way. So we have to sum the adjacent states to get to the current state. So for here, it will be 3 plus 1, that is 4. Here, 4 plus 1, that is 5. 5 plus 1, 6. And 6 plus 1, 7. And how many here? So it will be 3 plus 3 here, that will be 6. Because we can reach this square in 3 ways and this square in 3 ways. And we can reach this square from either top or either from the left. So the answer will be this state plus this state. That is the adjacent states. The sum of adjacent states will be our answer. So 6. 6 plus 4, 10. 10 plus 5, 15. 15 plus 6, 21. And 21 plus 7 is 28. Here yeah, 2. 28 should be our answer. Let's check it. Yeah, 28 is our answer. So it's that simple to do. So congrats, you have learned DP. So let's code this. Here. First, we will make a DP matrix. That will be of size M cross N here. Then we will use a for loop to initialize the this first row as one and this first row as column. Here we are going to initialize this first row that is i comma zero. This is actually the first column and the second for loop is for the first row. We will initialize every element from index one to n minus one. That is index zero. Uh, like initializing index zero won't matter as we are already there so it won't change or affect our answer so we will be initializing index 1 to n minus 1 as 1 and index 1 to m minus 1 as 1 for both first row and first column only from second column and second row onwards we will be using a for loop to initialize every element as the sum of their adjacent states as we see saw here as we saw here we can see that this 1 plus 1 that is the sum of adjacent states was the result of a current state so here we did dp of i comma j is i minus 1 comma j that is the left cell and i comma j minus 1 that is the top cell first of all we will be creating a dp matrix of size n plus n to store our states then we will initialize two for loops. These for loops are for initializing the elements of first row and first column to one. As we saw here, there is only one way to reach every element of the first row and the first column. We will initialize each element with one. That is, we will initialize each state of first column and first row with one. Then we will define a for loop, which will be for this area from here to here here we will initialize the for loop from the second element of the second row and then calculate our states now how will the states be calculated we saw that the current state is the sum of the adjacent states that is this state here is the sum of the adjacent 1 and 1 here this state here 10 is the sum of adjacent states 4 and 6 and so on so this loop will initialize the states of rest of our dp matrix and then we will finally return the state of m minus 1 and n minus 1 that is this cell our destination cell so that's it that's the code hope you got it and uh, yeah we are going to discuss the second the direct approach to this problem so there's nothing there's this direct formula that is m plus n minus 2 c n minus 1 
you must have studied this in your 12th class in those permutations and combinations split problem so this is the combination of this n plus n minus 2 c n minus 1 that is leaving this there are n minus 1 columns and m minus 1 rows so we are combining them and then selecting n minus 1 ways that is n minus 1 uh, columns to reach our destination so as we have to select those n minus 1 columns we will be left with m minus 1 rows so eventually this combination will also give you the answer to your problem and hope you understood this tp approach so yeah that's it thank you